Hello everyone, welcome to another Rick's Picks. Today I'm going to be doing my review of Mara Jade from the Star Wars Black series. Now for any of you who don't know who she is, she was a very predominant character in the Star Wars Extended Universe, which is now known as Legends. And the long and the short of it was, she was the Emperor's Apprentice, one of the most powerful Jedis out there. Then she became a smuggler and eventually became a Jedi Knight and marrying Luke Skywalker. So that's the short of it. If you want to know more about it, I highly recommend that you read the books that she's in. They're really good books and, you know, definitely worth the read. So with all that being said, what we're going to do today is we're going to look at her in box and then we're going to take a look at her and her accessories. And then I'm going to give you my thoughts and opinions on the action figure. So if you do like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. So without any further ado, Let's get to the review. All right, so here she is in box. Um, I love this front cover because it's straight from, you know, the comics. Because not only was she part of the book series, eventually they did make comic books with her in it. So, you know, I love this. I love the Star Wars, Dark Force Rising. And the artwork is really nice. You got her name, your choking hazard, age restrictions, and a Hasbro logo. Now, here's where I'm kind of disappointed in the box, because when you open it up, once again, you get this really nice artwork here. I really like that. You give a brief, brief description of her character in five different languages. But now here comes the disappointing part, this. And the reason why this is disappointing is, for me, it's not a big issue because I take my figures out of box but I know a lot of people like to keep their figures in box. And one thing they liked is the clear clamshell so you can actually see the actual figure and her accessories. But Hasbro, I guess in an attempt to go green, they, they're getting rid of the plastic. As you can see right here, plastic free packaging. Which me personally, and this is just me, I don't understand why they would get rid of plastic. Because plastic is recyclable. So it isn't like something that would sit in a landfill. Um, and it would be, you know, better for, once again, the collectors who like to keep their figures in box so they can actually see the actual figure instead of this picture. Which is a nice picture. Don't get me wrong. I like this picture. It's a really good picture of the figure. I would think that would probably be nicer on the back of the packaging or something. You know, so that's just my personal thoughts on it. You know, um, if you're somebody who thinks this is a good idea, you know, cool. But I think, like like I said, for the people who like to display their stuff in packaging, I would think that this would be a letdown to them. Um, if I'm right in that, just let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think about Hasbro's new packaging. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? You know, just let me know in the comments. So, let's start Looking at the rest of this packaging here. So, you got this side here. You have her name. A quick black and white of her. And then the Star Wars logo. This side, you have, you know, some black and white art. Uh, a quick picture of the figure, you know, with her accessories. And then you have all your legals. Like I said, I think that that picture of her from the front would probably look better on the back here. But that's just, once again, my personal opinion. Then you have the side here where you have more comic art. Okay. And then you have the top that has more comic art. And then the bottom, the same. And once again, they're stressing the plastic-free packaging except tape and glue. Like I said, I think it's an environmental thing, but... I personally don't get it because, like I said, plastic is recyclable. So, it isn't like it's going to get dumped somewhere. So, with all that being said, let's take a look at her and see how cool the figure is. Alright, so I'm doing something a little bit different in this one. Um, This is her in, you know, after I take her out of the box. Because, like I said, they're going with a more, 
you know, plastic free, you know, setup for their Star Wars figure. So uh, what it is, is she's in this wrapping here and then her accessories are in the wrapping there. Uh, I know they're going to also be doing this with the classified figures as well. So be on the lookout for that. Now, the, the thing that concerns me with this is this here. You know, be very careful. Make sure you have a count of all your accessories because they're hidden in this tissue. So when I pull this off of here, that just easily pops out of there. You know, and this opens up. Rips open. You got all your accessories in here. I would check any of this paper for any loose accessories because if any of these figures come with any really, really small you know, pieces, they may get lost in this little baggie here. So that's something to be concerned about. Um, see, you got two straps here. Now, the nice thing is if you look, these straps um, are in the front. So when you take your knife, be very careful. And you could just cut the tape right there. And you can do it without damaging the figure. So see? How easily that just pops open. All right, put that aside. And then you unbag her after you go through a ton of tissue. So she's now out of the packaging. So me personally, as somebody who opens your figures, this is a little bit easier for me. It's a lot better than, you know, having to cut a hundred twist ties and what have you. So, you know, I, I wish they would found a way to be able to, make it so you can display the actual figure in box. So, you know, those who are once again, collectors who don't want to open their figures could see the figures, but overall getting her out of the box was very easy. So that is definitely an advantage to, you know, Hasbro's new setup. So here she is out of box. Um, she's a really good looking figure. She really captures the look from the comics. Uh, let's give her the rotation. All right, she has a lot of really nice detail to her. Uh, they definitely put a little bit of work into her. All right, now the problem I have with her, and the same with um, Dr. Um, Afrit, is that they made the holes in her feet a little too shallow. So I had a hard time uh, using my stands with them. Um, so that, that that's something you can think about. Right now I'm using a hip stand for um I'm at, i have it right under the belt line to hold her up so that's something as a collector you may want to think about um using for her but other than that she's really good looking uh let's go through her points of articulation so the head rotates got a shoulder joint an elbow joint and a wrist joint all right you have one right here at the torso you have a thigh joint a swivel, really tight, but it's there. A knee joint. And an ankle joint. So, now with this figure too, um, I'd put a little bit of caution to her. Um, you may want to soak some of these joints in hot water because they seem really, really, you know, tight on her. And the last thing you want to be doing is breaking your figure. So, she does come with a couple accessories. So, she has... You know, the standard Star Wars blaster. Okay. And, of course, she has her iconic lightsaber. Now, with the lightsaber, the blade does come off. And the reason for that is she has a hook spot right here on her hip. Oops. That the lightsaber just hooks right on there. So that way, if you want to display her in a casual look and you want her lightsaber on the side, you can do that. If not, you know, you can just put her iconic blade back on here. And yes, she actually had the purple blade before Waste, uh, Mace Windu. So for any of those who are curious, yeah, she was actually the first one to wield a purple lightsaber. So with that being said, let's look how these things fit in her hand. So her blaster, you're going to have to work it up. Uh, the fingers are... Oops. The fingers are soft, so you can move the fingers to get it into an open position and just work it a little bit. 
Hold on. Yeah, there it goes. Whoops. Popped out. Hmm. All right. So there you go. You got the blaster. Um, yeah, I was... Yeah, I'm not liking that. Um, get the finger right. Okay. I don't know. Um, it looks like she holds it in a down position. I don't... Uh, here, let's bend her arm up. I mean, yeah, that works a little bit better. All right. So the blaster fits in nicely. It looks right, you know, in her hand. So, okay, I'm all right with that. And then, of course, you got your hoster right here. Slides right in. No issues. And, of course, we got to have the lightsaber. You can't have a Jedi without a lightsaber. So there's the lightsaber. No problems. So overall, I really like this figure. I think if you're a big fan of the Extended Universe and you always liked her character, which most of us from the old days did, then I would highly recommend this figure to go with the rest of your Star Wars collectibles. So with that being said, I hope you did like this video. If you did, go ahead and check out my Star Wars playlist where I do reviews on other Star Wars stuff. Like I got some really cool Star Wars stuff you know, in the pipeline to come out and show you. So as that comes out, you know, you're going to be seeing some really cool Star Wars stuff. And if if not the Star Wars stuff, then check out some of my other videos. You may like those as well. So um, if you can, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, because that would really help this channel. And if you want to see more, hit the notification bell. So until the next one, late.